Hi, I'm Coffee Kevin, and today we have uh, really exciting uh, news. We have a brand new coffee maker. Uh, it's from Brim, and Brim is a name that really, uh, you know, I said to myself, wow, I know this name. You know, Brim used to have a, uh, a decaf coffee. I remembered it, uh, I'm going to say, in the 70s. And if I'm wrong, I'm sure they'll let me know. But uh, the, uh, anyway, I met uh, Brim uh, folks at the uh, houseware, International Houseware Show in Chicago. And then I uh, met them again um, at the Specialty Coffee Association uh, conference, the exposition in, um, in Boston uh, just a, a, a few weeks ago. And they, uh, they said they would. They had a well. I saw their new brewer in Chicago, and then when I was in Boston, they said, "You know, we'll send it to you." And uh, it turns out that they, they, I think they gave uh, their coffee equipment away to some uh, people in the business who were uh, who were producers of coffee. So um, that's uh, very uh, nice that they did that. On the other hand, uh, I was a little bit nervous, uh, but no. Sure enough, uh, they sent me. Um, they uh, quickly sent me um, this coffee brewer, and I'm going to enter. I am entering. I'm actually already in uh, testing on it, but I try to spend 30 days before I ever dare uh, print a word as a review. So this will not be a review, but we're going to. Um, oh my gosh, that uh, it sounds like I've got a phone call coming in, and uh, is it? Uh, Am I in trouble? Okay. Uh, the uh, <laughs> so we, it's um, uh, the bat phone, you know, the uh, that uh, everyone so, remember on Batman when it glowed, you know, it's certain calls. Uh, but uh, this coffee maker is uh, is pretty interesting. And by the way, I I'll let this out of the bag right away. It um, it's gold cup certified, which uh, it means it already should be. Um, at least in the running to test, you know, it doesn't mean uh, my tests won't show some differences uh, or some uh, specialty uh, features, etc. cetera, but um, uh, it already apparently meets uh, the standards uh, that, are, that have been set for a gold cup, uh, which means, um, what does it mean? That means that it reaches um, a brewing temperature for some percentage, high percentage of its brew cycle between 196 uh, Fahrenheit and 205 Fahrenheit. Um, it means that uh, there's a, a brew time uh, that's um, four to six minutes in the, uh, in the drip mode uh, for um, uh, one liter. And, uh, and the uh, recipe for one liter that's tested uh, is uh, uh, 55 grams uh, for one liter of coffee. And what I'm going to do today is uh, I'm going to brew with it, and I've uh, even, uh, I'll brew it with it just like I uh, would brew if I was uh, reviewing it. And we will, uh, I will hold uh, withhold um, testing all the parameters of it, uh, but at least you'll get a chance to uh, to see it. It's a uh, I can tell you it's a pretty exciting machine to me, and it's exciting to see a new player in the marketplace. Um, I don't recall uh, ever testing a model from Brim before, and uh, I will tell you they impressed me. They are doing a lot of work um, uh, to enter the marketplace uh, properly. Uh, they've got some uh, written materials there. Uh, instruction manual is above average, uh, et cetera. We'll go over a few things. Um, again, won't be a review, but uh, get a chance to uh, try it out here. And then uh, before, however, we get underway, while I was in Boston, I ran into uh, Ted Lingle. And Ted, of course, is the uh, former executive director of the Specialty Coffee Association of America. When I first started writing about coffee. Ted was one of the first people that I met in the Specialty Coffee Association. Uh, I met him in Seattle. Uh, I, I remember it was I went to Denver, but then I flew to Seattle, and I was introduced to Ted. 
And uh, I remember writing about him uh, shortly afterwards, and I remember saying, if I recall, uh, Ted Lingle is everyone's image of an airline captain. And uh, uh, he just is to me. He just is one of those people. He's, uh, he's ex-military. He's got a certain uh, polish about him, very uh, mannered and uh, well-mannered and, uh, and, and has a, uh, just something about him that when he says something, it just uh, seems like he's got it on. I can't imagine him uh, making an error on a, on a, uh, a, a, quoting a temperature or something that I uh, would frequently do. But he is, uh, he's also uh, very, uh, very thorough. You know, I, I wanted to make sure I had his credit right. I sent him an email within, you know, 20 minutes. I had um, exactly uh, what, what we wanted back. And uh, so he's communicative, uh, very uh, happy to uh, run into him. And the interesting thing is he's, he's talking about uh, a very interesting subject, and that is China and coffee. And China, its emergence on the coffee scene. And uh, that is uh, uh, not surprising. Uh, China is, of course, a giant uh, part of uh, the world's economy, the world itself, the world's population. It wouldn't be surprising to me uh, that it's a huge market for coffee and the kind of coffee that uh, we like here, which is... Uh, gourmet specialty coffee, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm uh, enthusiastic about all coffees, um, but I definitely am interested in what China's doing with coffee. And with that in mind, uh, let's take a look at this, uh, at this very uh, concise, but I think you'll find interesting interview with Ted Lingle. Ted Lingle, someone who I really respect. I met him. He was the executive director of the Specialty Coffee Association of America, and I'm very pleased to have him here today with us. He's going to tell us a little bit about coffee in China. Ted, what is, I thought China, I think of tea. Is that uh, no longer accurate? Uh, no, China will always be a big tea producer and consumer, but the younger generation in China, the millennials, are really taking to coffee. And so uh, China's on its way to becoming the third largest coffee consumer in the world. It'll probably take another generation, another 10 to 20 years, but their consumption is on a pathway to make them a very large consumer. And when we say coffee, is, is it going to be espresso or is it going to be uh, filtered drip coffee? It's gonna be coffee in all forms. The younger generation is really embracing technology and are developing some very sophisticated coffee skill sets. And you see that in the competitions they run, whether it's a barista competition or latte art or siphon brew or drip brew. They're really very passionate about coffee and are developing some very fine skill sets. And what about, uh, that's uh, brewing but is, is all well and good and consumption of course is great, but what about uh, the production of coffee? Uh, it's kind of interesting. They've been growing coffee in Southeast Asia for over a hundred years. It was introduced by the French missionaries when this region of the world was known as French Indochina. So uh, Southern China, Myanmar, which was the old Burma, Laos, Vietnam, all have had uh, quite a history in coffee, but in very small amounts. And it's been in the last uh, 30 years that it started, mainly because of the activities of Nestle. But in the last 10 to 15 years, Yunnan has made tremendous strides as a coffee producer. They've grown from roughly uh, 500,000 bags a year to now producing more than 2 million. So China is now the world's ninth largest producer of washed Arabica coffees. Do you think we'll see the Chinese coffees in the States soon? Uh, we're working on that now. That's what the purpose of the exhibit is. And wow. there's uh, some available in small amounts, but we're trying to uh, really introduce uh, China's coffee uh, to the U.S. trade. 
And how about, um, from a point of view of, of serving uh, coffee, is there a coffee ceremony or anything like that, or is it more casual like it is here? And and uh, the other question I guess I would have on top of that is do they use cream and sweeteners, or do they drink it black? Well, it depends on uh, which coffee drinking you're looking at. The typical Chinese person is used to uh, what's a beverage called three-in-one, which is an instant coffee with cream and sugar. But the new millennials are really into sort of craft brewing on a very technical level and drinking coffee black. Wow, that's a that's a quite a quite a change to see that happen so quickly, really in time. It's not been that long since it started, you know, here and in Europe. Well, it's the really I think the advent of the internet and the way. Uh, particularly in the last 20 years, we've become a global coffee community. And so things that have happened in the United States or things that have happened in Europe are now a big part of the scene in Southeast Asia, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, and now China. Now that begs another question to me, and that is, are we moving towards an internationalism in coffee where no matter where you are in the world, it's going to be largely the what I guess we I would call third wave or whatever its successor is. We're there now. Yeah. It's uh, no question about it. I mean, coffee is consumed in more than 100 different companies, countries, and it's produced in over 50. So coffee really started out as an international commodity. And really, the growth and success of the specialty industry has caused that to accelerate. So what happens here in this show is happening uh, in other coffee shows all over the world. Very interesting. Well, I, I really appreciate your knowledge and uh, your insights. I mean, our audience, this is incredible information to us. Thank you, Ted. You're welcome. Thank you, Kevin. I definitely uh, found that uh, an interesting uh, journey. And I didn't realize, is it Myanmar? Did I, am I, uh, I did not realize the uh, pronunciation, and I, maybe I still don't. But uh, that coffee, I've actually had some. Uh, in fact, I brought it on to uh, Hannah Stanley's uh, radio show on WGN one night, and it's a great coffee. I really had a uh, uh, great sample at any rate. Uh, so I'm looking forward to trying some other coffees from the from the area of that area of the world. Uh, certainly. Um, I would say so far, just generally, um, they've had uh, what I would call Pacific characteristics. Not that there's, it's so difficult to just, you know, take a that large of a region and then just say, you know, it has a certain uh, taste, uh, signature taste of that region. But there are some things in common um, uh, that uh, I find with the geographic areas of coffee, uh, not to stereotype them or, or limit them. Uh, anyway, let's, uh, but thank you, uh, Ted, for, uh, for giving us that overview. Uh, I was uh, really impressed and, and very uh, happy and surprised uh, to uh, run into him uh, very early in the, uh, in the expo. I, uh, now let's talk about this coffee maker. This is the Brim uh, eight cup, and I want to. I want you to see something that I'm pretty. You know, it's even an instruction manual. Brim since 1961. I didn't realize that. And then they talk about all oh, the safeguards that stuff. And I never read that, of course. Um, then, uh, but they they get into some pretty good detail um, uh, here. Uh, this is the usual stuff. There are some. There's a, a video they uh, drive you to, which is nice. Um, the usual. They have you uh, uh, actually put vinegar with the water to, uh, uh, and then run several batches of water through it. All that's done, of course, um, in advance. Um, has a, a dry alarm in case you don't put water in it. Um, I've done that, so uh, not with this brewer, but. Uh, and then uh, they give you some uh, notes here, um, and they talk about the gold standard, uh, gold cup standard, and uh, then they give you instructions for it. Um, 
which are good, and then some hints, uh, which I think was, uh, I thought they were pretty good, you know, overall, uh, better written. And they also have a, uh, a two-year warranty, which I, which I'm, uh, that impresses me. That's, a, I think, double um, what a lot of companies have. I'm sure I'll get some notes on that one. Uh, it also ships with a, uh, a permanent filter. Uh, you can go to the uh, close-up over here, Mike, uh, for that. Um, and, and just, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm ready for it. So, yeah, uh, here, I'll bring it down. No, it's okay. Just keep the camera there. Uh, there we go. And then um, that is a um, uh, laser-etched uh, stainless steel filter. Um, they, it does a pretty good job of limiting the grounds in your cup. Um, I haven't, uh, now I have to admit, I have not brewed yet with it. So, uh, that, uh, I'm just saying in general, um, these types of filters. Uh, but again, I haven't tried this specific one. That'll be part of the test. But a lot of people really like permanent filters. Uh, so far, I generally, um, prefer a paper filter. Uh, let's, uh, take a look at the, uh, the brew basket, I think it's kind of neat. There's a little stand uh, that it comes with that you can put the uh, that you can put the brew basket on and then and then set it down on the uh, there on the counter. You know when you're done, you can. So that's nice too. Uh, none of which, uh, none of this stuff so far. Well, I guess this uh, permanent filter maybe has anything to do with how the coffee will taste. Now what? Um, uh, and then, oh yes, it comes with a scoop, of course, the requisite scoop. And uh, by the way, it surprised me a little bit. This scoop um, is actually a uh, a nice uh, 10 gram scoop. So it is really what I would call an approved coffee measure scoop. And uh, that impressed me. Okay, now let's make coffee. Let is. It's, and it's going to, by the way, uh, Mike, you can get a close-up of this uh, right here, uh, the fill line on this, uh, from that camera, actually. Okay, and uh, it's got an optimum setting right there. Can you zoom in just a little bit on that? If you need me to, I can move the coffee brewer. And then right in here, go in as close as you can on right up here. Uh, and focus up. There you go. No? Can you focus on it there? There you go. Or I'll, I'll, I'll move it over just a little bit. It's got optimum. And then I will fill the water to that point. Okay, and that should be one liter. And okay, and then go to the other camera for a second. All right, and then we will. Uh, use a paper filter for this one. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, they've redesigned, they've got their. Um, I think it's worth noting, um, they've got like a, uh, well, it reminds me of a Chemex, um, but it is a, a beautiful glass uh, carafe, uh, so it's not, uh, but it's interesting, they've added a handle here, uh, part of it, uh, silicone, and uh, I assume it's dishwasher safe, I don't know about with the silicone on, I, I think you, however, it's uh, got, it, it's removable. So, and then let's, uh, let's put this in here. And then what I have done is I've pre-measured this. Oh, it's actually, sorry. <laughs> okay. And then uh, put this insert in, which is the filter holder. And then there, you've got uh, that. And then we will put in... Um, I measured uh, 50, 
uh, actually it says 55 grams. Uh, I went to 56 grams, so I just like a little more throw weight, as uh, the industry calls it, of coffee. Generally, one, one gram more anyway. Here, let's make sure all of those grounds get in there. And I ground it uh, just like a... Uh, and then I shake them just a little bit, not overly. I never press on them. And that is a drip grind. And uh, it's the same grind I usually use for all of my coffee. And then um, we are ready. Uh, so I've got, let's see, 56 grams of coffee, drip grind, to one liter of water. And uh, let's start it. Uh, the, they talk about the spray head on this, and actually now is not a good time to show it to you because that would have been a good use for that other camera down there. We could have done that. Um, maybe you can adjust that camera mic while we're brewing and get it ready for this because I'll take it out at the end and we'll show everyone the shower head because it's really got a nice wide shower head. And you'll see it when it's, uh, when it's dripping. And we'll actually try to get the temperature um, of the shower head. And here we go. It's starting. Uh, it doesn't take long. It's got a pretty fast uh, heater, which is a sign of a good coffee maker. And uh, it pours a little bit of water over it. And then it hesitates for a few seconds. And then it starts um, dripping a little more. And you should be able to get a, um, a little bit of a shot in there. There we go. Not bad. Um, and then we will... The idea is to get... Now let's see if we can get a temperature reading already. And uh, maybe it's... it's, it's there, uh, It's very hard to test the temperature at this point because it keeps coming out of different spigots so it's kind of a game of chase for me no I can't really get under the uh, under there yet when I test it um, well one thing I do is it won't it won't uh, may or may not uh, we're in 190 in the uh, actual basket itself it's about 195 194 there we go there we go It'll actually get hotter as we uh, 196, so it's it's uh, it's already well uh, at the uh, there we go 197. And the spec is for a percentage of time, so if the first 30 seconds or so it's a little bit uh, cooler, that's not a that's not an issue actually. During that time, you can see, if you can see in there, I don't know if we can. There, it's 199. I don't know if we'll be able to see in there, uh, Mike, but uh, there's, you can see that uh, it the w coffee foamed up uh, quite a bit, which is pretty impressive considering this is a, uh, uh, a uh, coffee, a mass coffee that probably was roasted a couple of months ago. Um, that I bought uh, from a Dunkin' Donuts, and uh, it's their original blend. And it is, uh, I understand that uh, some people only use uh, single origins from uh, uh, high-end roasters, but uh, I think Dunkin' Donuts has a good blend. And I remember, I have to brew a lot of coffee for these tests, so I, I don't... Uh, I don't insist on that, and actually, I think it's a good, uh, good coffee. I would say, in some ways, it's one of the coffees that got me involved with coffee to begin with. So I probably still have some sentiment for it. I said sentiment, not sediment. Okay, and then, but uh, yeah, we're right at the. We're getting a good uh, brew temperature. Again, this is not. Don't construe this for review. I, I will publish a chart when I actually formally um, do the review but it's a 197 198 uh, on average right now and that to me is a great uh, brewing temperature uh, there between there and 200 um, 
is uh, kind of optimum for me. Um, I'll show you something else about this um, brew basket when I'm when I'm done that I'm uh, kind of find interesting uh, just as a first uh, glance. And uh, but look at the uh, the, uh, the grounds are all submerged; they're all getting nicely wet uh, over the over the full range of. Uh, then that's what you want with drip. Just like it's a, it's different than if you were using a, a gooseneck kettle, where, you, but you would be doing the same thing with the one spigot in effect. Um, you know, sometimes uh, I wonder if it's uh, there's a market for a gooseneck kettle that is actually like a has a flower. Um, you know, when you pour water over flowers, is like a spray head sometimes at the end. Uh, but at any rate, uh, all the grounds are nicely immersed, and uh, it's a good sign, and the temperature looks like it's good. It's probably, um, if I recall, I clocked uh, this in an earlier uh, run-through, and it was about five minutes uh, start to finish for the, uh, for the one liter, and that's a good, uh, a nice contact time between the water and the grounds. So, yeah, there we go. Oh, and I would like to point this out. This coffee, uh, you can go to the wide shot for this, Mike. This coffee is, uh, uh, I'm using, I, I put the uh, Dunkin' Donuts coffee and I put it into a, a coffee freshness system canister. And uh, I find, again, uh, this uh, injects uh, CO2 into it and uh, pulls all the, for, after pulling all the oxygen out, and I get a real nice, uh, I can keep this fresh. <laughs> For months if I wish to. So I just thought I would mention that. All right, and then look at this. It is uh, getting near uh, the end here. And just curious. Well, it's. Too... Yeah, it's 190, 197. And we're done. Now. We'll get a chance to uh, pour some coffee. Here's what we do. We take it out. And it is a, a warming plate, which, again, I prefer, but not everyone does. Uh, I know I told them that, too. So if they have um, a different version uh, without a thermos, uh, they would have sent me this one because that's what I would have requested. Um, I'm going to set this down. And other than sticking the temperature in there, a thermometer in there, you'll get a chance, Mike, to go in on this and show everyone um, what a nice uh, what a nice uh, job it did. Uh, look at that! If you can go in, do I? You need it more this way. All right, and let's. Uh, there we go. Do you see that? Do you see what a great? Uh, you're a little soft on your focus. Okay, and then, uh, wow. Just does a uh, terrific job of getting all the grounds wet, and that's its job. That's what a coffee maker's supposed to do over a period of time. You know, it's not rocket science, but it is science. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, okay, good. And then let's uh, let's get this out of the way, and uh, let's pour some coffee for us. So you and I, I brought a cup for both of us. And then, all right. all right, thank you. And then, let's see. That's okay, I, I'll just keep it uh, nearby. Oh, here, I did have a, a cloth we brought down. I couldn't find it, but uh, either way. All right, and then let's get the uh, other cup filled, and all right, there we go, okay. And then I'll take here, let me give you the, this is hotter. And then everybody drinks coffee around here. Mm, all the aromas. First of all, it, it's 
in a way, it's a blessing that coffee is served so hot because I, I you don't know, drink it when it's this hot usually. And but I, it gives me a chance to sniff the aroma. Oh, there's a nice. <sighs> uh, it's it's too hot, but it is delicious. I can already tell you. Uh, and again, I want to point out something, by the way. And I've got a lot of friends who are specialty roasters, and I certainly earn my uh, right to uh, uh, say what I think. Uh, and uh, I don't have enough sponsorship money anyway to buy me off. So it's it's uh, I'm gonna just keep shooting from the hip until I'm. Uh, under the ground, uh, but uh, definitely, uh, I'm. Uh, I can tell you already. Uh, this has got a good start. Let's put it that way. Um, uh, but I definitely, as much as I like a lot of really costly coffees, and I'm hoping, I'm looking forward to. You know, Clatch just brought out a seventy dollar a cup coffee. Did that resonate with everyone? Seventy dollars a cup. And the amazing thing about it is, knowing Kalach, there's a possibility that it's worth it. That's a little frustrating to me because uh, as I look at the, you know, Senate uh, family uh, fortune, uh, I can really make it dwindle on those types of prices. But I'm, I'm hoping uh, to get a small sample uh, from the Perry family and... Uh, I'd love to brew on camera and try it out. Uh, but I'm sh again, I'm sure it's at least a really good coffee, but, you know, $70 a cup. But I do want to point out, uh, you know, just so I'm uh, 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 sort of uh, calling a truce on the class warfare system, uh, there is not, uh, uh, you can get some really good coffee, and I think Dunkin' Donuts does a really good job of blending. Blending is, in many ways, a lost art. Because, you know, you have the bottom of the heap where there are coffees uh, that are uh, cluttering supermarket shelves that I think are, uh, it's really difficult to find one that's properly stored, that's fresh enough, uh, has other issues with it too. I like it in bean form. I like it to be super fresh. And, uh, but definitely this is a, um, mm. Now it's getting into drinking range. It's a good blend. These are very skillful blenders. Have I ever told you I came this close to seeing the Dunkin' Donuts uh, recipe, their bean recipe, meaning the blend, how they, what they, uh, how it's uh, specified? I've, I just was that close, and uh, someone at, uh, they flew me into. Uh, I know I was in Massachusetts. That's all I remember. And someone said, would you like to see our recipe? And I said, yeah. And, and they pulled a file, a uh, little file open, a little file drawer. And all of a sudden, um, the marketing person came up and from an agency yet. And she slammed the drawer shut <laughs> and uh, said, not today, and gave me the smile. So... Didn't get to see it after all, but uh, I do. Uh, I do respect um, what they do. So, because I need to brew a lot of samples, but I need to be able to drink them too. And I think um, it's good roast. One of my favorites. Okay, let's see. What else have we, uh, have I forgotten to cover anything? One liter, uh, fill it to the optimum. Why is that? Why would you fill it to the optimum and not fill it to, let's say, eight cups or four or six? Well, at four cups, um, the bed depth is going to be less. And I'm just not sure that that's um, a good idea. Uh, at six, uh, at, uh, at the maximum, which is eight cups, I think there's another uh, challenge that we have, and that is, I'm just trying to get a spill off camera up without drawing attention to myself. Um, there is another challenge that we have, and that is um, it takes longer to go through 
and therefore it may not meet Gold Cup standards. Um, at uh, the and this is not just this brewer. This is many brewers. Uh, maybe all brewers. I'm not sure. Some of them claim they have a range that still meets Gold Cup standards. Uh, that would be an interesting segment if I ever get that complete list. But uh, and I'm sure it's a moving target. But because I know the standards keep changing and keep tightening, so that they want. Um, Obviously, the idea is you should be able to get a coffee maker and make all the uh, cups of coffee sizes and meet the gold cup standards. But that's there is an optimum that they're tested for, and it is the standard is one uh, one liter of coffee um, with 55 grams of coffee uh, to meet it. And then you can you can go off. I mean, it's not a law, you know, from a consumer's point of view. You can make your coffee as strong as you want, but that's what the gold cup standard is. Let me just take a sip here. And now I want to show you one more thing. This is the, uh, the filter basket. And if you look down here, Mike, can we get a shot of this camera and looking down right into the barrel of this thing? There we go. That is, that shows you it's a larger hole than, for instance, um, Oh, uh, let me think of a Techniform or a, a Melita or the uh, Bonavita uh, that uses this style uh, filter. And in some ways, I, uh, well, I can tell you what, what does that mean from a coffee brewing point of view. It means that there's more um, control of the flow rate and the contact time between the hot water and the ground coffee um, by the filter paper or the filter medium rather than, uh, or the grind size rather than this, uh, this is a faster flow, uh, through it. And, uh, therefore it may, uh, may, uh, change the dynamics or it will change the dynamics of the, of the brewing. Uh, it's just a question of, um, how exactly, um, but I, uh, I can only say that so far, you know, again, preliminary, preliminary, just taste. Um, I'm pretty impressed. So I welcome uh, Brim to the uh, the world of, of coffee brewing. Now we can go back to the wide shot. I'm pretty much done with this. Thanks, Mike. Sorry, I, I didn't give you a clue. And thank you. And, uh, and then uh, definitely, I would say that uh, this is, um, I would welcome Brim. I think... Uh, I'm impressed so far. They also sent me a grinder, and uh, so I'm I'm uh, interested to uh, try that as well. So, and I all I can say is, uh, hmm, great tasting cup of coffee. Anyway, I enjoyed uh, bringing the uh, Ted Lingle segment to you and uh, trying out this coffee maker with you today. Uh, as far as coffee con goes, um, we are, we're working on our website this week. Uh, we realized that there's some dated material there and, uh, that's, uh, was, uh, somehow, uh, archived, uh, and, uh, we, uh, need to update it. So, uh, we'll be working on that. Keep t checking and keep watching these clips because this is where we will announce our, uh, forthcoming shows and events first. So I'm Coffee Kevin, uh, good to see you and uh, see you soon.